watch the stony ground. I want you to learn a Greek word this morning. It, it is the word proskopto. Pros, I should say. Proskopto. It's two words in the Greek. Pros means moving forward. I mean, you're coming right along. Things are looking good. Pros meaning moving forward. Kopto means to chop. To chop down. To chop beating the breast in mourning. It means you fall. And sometimes if you don't watch the stony ground, that's what can happen to you. Man, we're doing good. Everything's just going fine. And the flesh is happy. I'm happy. Everything's doing good. But you're walking on rocky ground, stony ground. And the next thing you know, you're flat on your face. And it means also one of the primes is to stump or stob. Have you ever stumped your toe when you was barefooted? The old blood swells up around the big toenail or whichever toe it happens to be. And I think the reason our father used uh, proscopto is because there ain't much that hurts much worse than that, okay, for a few minutes. It hurts bad in a spiritual sense. You can see why he would bring mourning into that when we stumble. Figuratively and spiritually, it kind of has to do with apostasy. Meaning you were fooled. You weren't watching. You got tricked. And that's kind of what the word, that word incidentally, uh, proskopto, means to stumble or stumbleth. All right? And unfortunately in our lives, we grow careless at times. Sometimes careless because we're happy, meaning pros. We're moving forward. Things are looking good. And we let our guard down. Boy, does Satan love that. He just loves it when you let your guard down and you're so happy that you're not paying attention to anything. And wacko, there it comes. Okay. There are very simple ways that you keep away from that. Mainly that you ask your Father to protect you. Now, ever so many thoughts fall into this, you were told in Revelation, the 13th chapter, in the 18th verse, to count, I repeat, to count the number of the beast, that is to say, the false religionist. And we're told his number. But what does that word count mean in the Greek? It means to enumerate the stones, the stones of the rocky ground, Not our rock, their rock, Satan. In other words, we're taking that analogy and taking it then into the spiritual, whereby you count the stony people, even if you would, from, I'm not talking about somebody that gets stoned now, all right? We're not talking about that at all. But you watch those things that would cause you to be deceived. And, beloved, listen. Sometimes it can come from the religious community. If you did not check me out in the Word of God, I certainly wouldn't do it deliberately, but I might deceive you. So it falls on number one, you, to check out, does God's Word say what that teacher, minister, preacher says that it's stating? Is that the real thought? Now, naturally, a true teacher is going to teach you how to do that, how to check him out, how to ask questions for yourself and to study for yourself. Is that not what really a teacher's duty has always been, to teach a student how to study for themselves, not to be spoon-fed all their lives and have diapered 60-year-olds still in kindergarten? You don't want that. You don't want to be biblically illiterate and have to depend on a man all your life or a woman. You want to learn for yourself. So, one of the main things is to keep on guard. Anytime someone tries to tell you something that is contrary to the Word of God, you had better let the little sensors in the big toe start feeling out there like a cat's whiskers. 
feeling for those false rocks that are being cast in your way. Jesus, in a sense, gave us a very in-depth lesson in this in John, the 11th chapter. Let's go there, if we may. St. John, chapter 11, and verse 1. I'll start reading in verse 1 of John 11. We'll read down to my point. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Now, what is this word Lazarus? I mean, God didn't just pick this man for because he happened to be their brother. It was in part his name because Lazarus is the Greek equivalent of Eleazar. Who was Eleazar? Eleazar was the third son of Aaron his oldest two boys started playing with strange fire. And that's kind of the point of stumbling. They started playing with strange fire to light the altar of God. Don't ever do that. That means to take man's traditions and teach them as the Word of God straight from His altar. That makes God very angry. And I don't care if you think you're doing a religious thing. He will get you for it. I'm going to put it in that term rather than saying curse you for it because it's written, oftentimes He will even curse you for it. It's heavy. Don't let traditions be involved in God's Word. So, what is it saying here? God destroyed. He killed them deader than a hammer, those two oldest boys. And He took Eleazar, Lazarus in the Greek, and made him the high priest. So what Christ is about to do here is symbolic of bringing the high priesthood of the order of Aaron and Melchizedek back to life. All right, Back where you have reach of it. Back where you can touch it. That is to say, mentally, whereby you can understand the Word of God. All right? You got that? may sound complicated, it isn't. It simply means that Lazarus means Eleazar from the Greek to the Hebrew. And that was the first chief priest of Aaron. All right, That God Himself named that that priesthood is being brought back to life through Christ. All right, Now, verse 2. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped His feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. I mean, he was, he, was, he was dying. This shows you the love of this family for him, incidentally, also. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. For when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. This is something that a lot of people don't understand. How could sickness ever glorify God? I'll tell you why. When a handicapped or a sick person witnesses for Christ, it means a lot more than if I do. It really glorifies God. And you'll never see a person like that that isn't special. I mean, bar none, they, deep down right in here, they're special. Right? So he said, this isn't a sickness to death. That means to Satan. But it's a sickness to glorify God. Well, how would that be? Bringing the, he's symbolizing the bringing back of the priesthood. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Six, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode. This is tot min min min, which means he deliberately, indeed, he delayed. He stayed there, remained. He didn't go. What kind of Lord is this? I mean, we got a man dying. But the emphasis is that he deliberately stayed there until the old boy kicked the bucket. All right? But what for? For the glory of God. Hang on. 
uh, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Seven. Then, after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. Now, this was the hot place at that time, and it still is to this day. The state in which Jerusalem lies, where the barometer for prophecy has sit all these years. His, verse 8, His disciples say unto him, Master, the teacher, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thither again? And now listen to this teaching, verse 9. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Naturally, Christ is that light. And I don't, the daytime has nothing to do with being able to see the rocks where you don't stumble. And this word again, you know it now. It's a Greek word you're very familiar with. Pros. Um, pros. And then the beating of the breast to be cut down. Pot. Okay. And with that, he, said, he says, you could stumble. You can be led astray. You can fall. You can stump your toe. When you think you're moving forward, well, we're moving forward trying to help poor old Lazarus and kaplop. Down you can go. I only use that to show that many times you can think you're doing a good thing. But my friend... If it has to do with traditions rather than God's Word and you're doing it in the name of God, He may not be too happy with you. Rather than blessing you, well, what do you think He's going to do if you're going against Him? You're not going to receive any blessing. So again, you must pay attention. Walk in the light. What's the light? Christ. Well, how do I walk in Christ? You study His Word. You learn His Word. You learn His path and you follow. Not lead, follow. You may lead people, but you always remember, follow Christ. That's why people that become leaders get on ego trips if they're not real careful. Is that they begin to be a leader of people and they begin to let that word leader kind of settle in up here. And really... What a leader is, is about a pint short of a gallon he's got up here. I'm not sure if that's the liquid measurement, but I'm going to use it. I'm sticking with it. I got it, okay? He's about a pint short of a gallon up here. And he begins to take pride in self. And he gets himself in trouble because God will take the scissors and cut that connection with the Holy Spirit. And then you've got a mouth going in no direction from God. All right? Follow the light and you'll never stumble. Follow Him. Don't trust man. It's good to love your brother. It's good to know your brother. But trust God only. He could be wrong. Not that you're just a distrustful person. He could be mistaken with good intentions. Because you're moving forward. Hey, we're going to have a meeting tonight and we're going to praise God. Well, always have those feelers out. Example, they have a ministry out now that's a... And I probably shouldn't mention this because I know nothing about it other than questions that have been called in about the so-called laughing ministry. Now, all I've heard about it is is that if the minister touches someone, they just start laughing insanely. That is, you know, out of control. Now, a wise person says, what? I mean, it's the new rage. That's the way to draw people to church. They've got to have something other than God's Word. Be careful, friend. Now, my old whiskers would be out there just singing like a fiddle string in a Texas sandstorm. Okay? It'd just be singing a song. And that'd be a Minnesota blizzard, all the same thing, you know. And and would put you on guard. Why? God's Word doesn't say anything about that. All right? Not in that 
context, at least. All right? So, enough said. Don't stumble. Notice he said, the light of this world. Who's in charge of this world right now? God is over all, but he has allowed Satan to be the prince of the air. Prince of the stones. Rearrange the rocks. And he'll rearrange the rocks in your head for you if you're not real careful. And you could believe a lie and fall. That's real sad when somebody's moving forward and doing real good and think they know everything. And sometimes that happens. You know, I wish I could say that I knew everything. But after 40 years, uh, more like 45 years of researching into the language, the manuscripts, into God's Word and teaching, it just lets you know how much you don't know. At the same time, not being biblically illiterate, but no man can know everything. It just doesn't work that way. Why? Because God is supernatural. He has a perfect plan. We only see a shadow of it. But how precious that shadow is. What I'm saying is, I'm saying that knowledge itself... In your mind, the way, and let me clarify that I'm going to put it right down in plain old country language, the way you perceive it in your mind. I know everything. Knowledge is so wonderful. I've read the Bible 12 times and I know everything. You don't. Believe me. I've read it 12 times. I've taught it through 12 times. I've read it in more language than one. I still don't know much about it. But we're getting there. In other words, what I'm saying, if you're not careful, you can come to a point where to say, well, I know enough to get by. Danger, my friend. Number one, if you say in your own mind, well, I know enough to get by anyway. Number one, you've cut off your communication with God because you're not going to listen to Him because you're a know-it-all. Now, I'm just being honest with you. So, what good would it do for him to try to have the Holy Spirit touch you? You know it all anyway. Or you're one of these people that know enough to get by. Just give me a biscuit and some gravy and I'll make it. You know? It's somebody that will settle for a second fiddle at the Lord's table. Okay? Don't pee that way. We don't know it all. We must... Continue to study, to dig, to search, to pray, and guide. Ask His guidance and leadership, or you're going to fall. And sometimes people will fall into that role and then wonder why God doesn't bless them. And they and themselves say, I know enough to get by. wonder why He doesn't bless me. You don't. If you don't depend on Him, the light... You cut off the light and you're in darkness and are ignorant of it, thinking you have knowledge. Sad. Really sad for somebody to get to know it all. Be thankful that God gives you a certain amount of knowledge. And then the Spirit will always be there that you can see the more in-depth teachings. Because... Teachers oftentimes don't draw attention to the more in-depth meanings, and only those that have eyes to see and ears to hear grasp it. They're not going to explain it in detail because it could not be ready for some others. Do you understand what I'm saying? Nobody knows it all. Be careful. That's one of the shadows of darkness that can deceive you. All right? You, it's kind of like... Many years ago, before we had these new fancy gadgets that if your lights um, uh, get a short or something, a buzz fuse clicks in and the lights will come back on for a few seconds. Back in my day when you had a Model A and you had the pedal to the metal on an old country road and it's darker than 60, and bingo, boy, when those lights are out there, you are 60 miles an hour on a sandy road. And you can't see five feet in front of you. I just wonder if anybody else ever had that happen to them in this room. I see a few hands. I see a, What a shock. If you ever need it, 
an illustration of what it's like to be caught in the dark. That'll do it for you, okay? And that came on up through even the old 36 Fords and on up. You could get, you could get let down a lot of times. Well, if you're not careful, beloved, in your daily walk, you can do the same thing. You can blow a fuse. And your mind kind of shuts down a little bit for a few seconds. And just as sure as you shut your mind and spirit down for a few seconds, don't you think Satan knows that? And he has one of his little boys put the shiniest, big old, jaggedest rock he could find. And they stand back and say, boy, this is going to be funny. Watch the servant of God. Whop! There you go. Stumping your toe, the blood flies, and you say, forgive me, God. I'll pay more attention next time. All right? So, what am I saying? Keep alert. I'm not scolding. I don't want you to take that. This is for me just as much as it is for you. All right? Keep alert in this generation, for there is wickedness in this world. We've seen gross examples of it this past week. Talk about a mother stumbling. And my, how I would hate to be in that mother's shoes. And I'm talking about the two little children. We don't know. Do you think Satan didn't have something to do with that? Of course he did. We're just living in that generation where you need to be on guard. But always know this. Never let it get you down or depress you. Pray for the situation. And let that, if anything, warn you. Because possibly if someone If that person, I don't want to use this as an example, I'm uncomfortable with it, but I'm going to that I've come this far. If some person had taught that little lady that there are danger signs, that you have those feelers out and if you need help, you need help. If you need help, get it. Talk to somebody. Communicate with your father through his word. And nothing like that would ever happen. But if you pull so far away from His Word that Satan takes over, it's a sad lot. Okay, Get help from a friend, a loved one, the church, whatever. Get help. Okay, Verse 10. Let's get on with it. I may be digressing, but I think not. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. It's a sure thing. He didn't say maybe. He said you will stumble. You're going to fall. You're going to fall away from... You're going to hurt yourself and possibly even others. These things saith he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of his sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if we sleep, if he sleep, rather, he shall do well. He was sick, and if he's resting good now, he ought to be getting better. Howbeit, Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Uh, Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. In other words, it was to prove a point that the ministry at that day was dead before Christ walked, uh, took, took over. In other words, Christ would say in Matthew chapter 23 that the Pharisees and the scribes sit in the seat of Moses. That's the lawgiver. It wasn't coming from God's Word. It was among traditions. Be alert. All right? Okay, skip down with me to verse 24. Uh, And they're, they're sad. I mean, their brothers, he's dead. All right? Martha, verse 24, Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again. In the resurrection at the last day, Jesus told him, said, your brother's going to rise again. I know that, Lord. I believe your teaching. 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? You know, teaching funerals is not one of my pleasures of the ministry. By that I mean it's just one of those things that you like less than some other things, naturally, because it means we've lost a loved one. But I always include this. 
Because one that loves him doesn't die. And that was his point. Of course, it wouldn't be long until he would say, Lazarus, come forth! And that ministry would live again. And then he would say, don't go among the dead looking for the living. Christ lives. Go to Him. But don't go to some dead tradition or dead religion and expect to find God. You won't. He won't be there. You may find all kind of emotional trips and gigs, but you're not going to find God if it's in the ways of man rather than the living Word. Go seek Him after the living There is another place that he warned us that Christ himself could become a stumbling block. Psalms, the 8th chapter. Let's turn there real quickly. I'm sorry, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. I'm going to pick it up in verse 14. With the foundation having been lain, listen carefully to the words of your Father. And He shall be for a sanctuary. This is to say the Lord. You know what a sanctuary is? It's a place of protection for you. Is He your protection today? You can't have better, my friend. And when you walk in this dangerous world, you need that sanctuary where He is around you wherever you are but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense. The word offense here means to stumble also. To both the houses of Israel and for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Who are the inhabitants of Jerusalem? The Israelites? No. It means everyone that lives there. Those that claim to be and in fact are the synagogue of Satan in fact. And all others. An inhabitant is somebody that lives like in the city of Gravit, let's say. If you are, it doesn't matter what tribe or color or creed. You live in Gravit. And if it affects the inhabitants there, it's all of them. All right? In other words, this stumbling block is going to be for all present. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared. That means trapped and be taken. See that you are not deceived. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Do you know what a disciple is? The the prime word, our word discipline comes from this. It means someone that disciplines themselves in the Word of God, not traditions. A disciple is a student. A student of what? It says, in the Word. The law is the Word, the Torah. All right, to discipline yourself in it. That's what the word um, uh, disciple means. Whereby, if somebody starts pulling your leg, you know it. I mean, there are some people that I think like to get their leg pulled. Well, I never heard that before. Tell me more. Tell me more. Well, don't tell me more. I don't want to hear the junk. All right, if it's junk, it's junk. If it smells like junk, most likely it's junk. Okay. Discipline yourself in the Word of God, the law of God. 17, and I will wait upon the Lord. That's patience. How many of you got all the patience you need? Right now. Okay. It's tough, all right? But wait upon the Lord, and that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Though God is not blessing this world right now, and he's not overall, his prophecies are coming to pass exactly as they're written, but he has withdrawn his blessings from a nation. But if you'll search for him, if you'll look for him, you'll find him. He will help you. That's what this prayer is about, okay? 18, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in 
Mount Zion. There is a little, um, there's a little saying here that was supposed to be part of this sign. Just turn back a little bit. There's, there's a deeper meaning in this, and I don't want to say a great deal about it to confuse, but I think I should call it to your attention as we go by. That's, it's a seed. In verse 1 of this chapter 8, I want you to read the word, write in it with a man's pen concerning Meher Shal Al Hazbaz. That's the sign, and that's the wonder. Do you know what it says? Haste, spoil, speed, and pray. In other words, the enemies are going to get what they got coming to them. That's what the sign is. And you keep telling them. Don't let them forget it. Your enemies shall soon be destroyed. That's the base prime meaning of it. You take a pen and you write it. I don't know if you realize it. That's what we do every day through the platform that God has given us is to warn the people of the stumbling blocks. 19. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits. Oh, and unto wizards that peep. Or that laugh. <laughs> That's just a little something I probably shouldn't put in there. I don't understand that. You know, I really can't understand a church of la- <laughs> laughing for joy. Yeah, but just for the sake of when the preacher touches you, he must have a very ticklish finger is all I can say. Oh, well. And that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God? Do you really like to hear that kind of stuff? One verse, Charlie's, that mutter and sputter and peep? Or do you like to hear God's Word? You know? Shouldn't people seek after their God? Of course. That's only common sense. For the living to the dead, again, from Christ's teachings in the book. Would you, are you so foolish that you would go to dead to the dead to find out about the living? That would mean you, these familiar spirits, wizards, buzzards, dreams, visions that have God, though He does use them to speak to people, you've got, I mean, regular wizards at it. And sorcerers. Uh, sorcerers comes from the word pharmakeia, which is pharmaceutical, which we get our word pharmacist, which means drugs. All sorts of little tricks in these end times. Verse 20. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word. How do you tell the difference? If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Beloved, if you ever wanted God's word, the truth, there it is. Be intelligent enough to know if somebody separates themselves from it, you're in danger. You could fall. And this is not a generation to fall in. And they shall pass through it, hardly be stead. This really falls out of, of, away from modern English. It means they're a hard case. You know what a hard case is? That's what it says. They shall pass through it a hard case and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. You've seen people like this, beloved. It's not, a, it's not a pleasing thing. How did God let this happen? How did God let a little thing like this happen? It's God's fault. It isn't God's fault. It's because the people get away from the Word of God. Don't turn around and blame my father for it then. Ignorance is bliss, I suppose. But get back in the Word and learn the truth. 22. And they shall look unto the earth. And behold, trouble and darkness and dimness of anguish. And they shall be driven to darkness. And my friends, we live in a dark generation. You know, I could weep very easily when I think of the things that have taken place in this past week. It wouldn't take a whole lot till I could just sit down and weep for what's happening to children in this nation. And if you can't recognize Satan on the horizon and to know the events, then you haven't got your feelers out. In closing, I'm going to do something. 
If you're ever discouraged, if you're ever at a time when you think you really need a prayer, I don't, I don't approve of written prayers, number one. I don't approve of ministers that read out of prayer books that are written prayers because to me, I don't think it's honest. Because you're not being honest with God and He's not going to hear you if you don't talk to Him from your heart just like you would to your wife or your husband or your best friend. But this is a prayer that if you ever need help, if you ever need someone to turn to, if you can't, if there's nobody close at hand that you can see, God's always there. Turn to Psalms 141. And don't wait too long to do it. Do it. I'm not talking about right now. I'm not rushing you. I'm simply saying if you catch yourself alone and and discouraged and depressed, always turn to Psalms 141. When you are in danger of maybe hurting someone else or yourself or it just seems like everything come unwired, all right? Remember this psalm. Verse 141. Lord, I cry unto Thee. Make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto Thee. Let my prayer be set forth before Thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. You know, in the book of Revelations, it says the saints' prayers as incense are bottled up, that God has them before Him. Don't think you'll be wasting that prayer. Don't think that He won't hear you. He will. And He considers it as a sacrifice from you when you're crying out yourself. What am I saying? He hears you. He cares. I don't care if another living soul in this world doesn't care. He cares because you are His child. Three, set a watch, O Lord. Set a guard before my mouth and keep the door of my lips. Don't, don't let me offend you, God. It doesn't hurt to pray that, dear one. Because if you're, if you're about halfway biblically illiterate, you can offend Him all to pieces and not even be aware of it. Let Him know that. That's what this is doing in a sense. It's a form of humbleness. Incline not my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works which with men that work iniquity. And let me not eat of their dainties. Don't let me see them doing something that's in a tradition and say, isn't that a wonderful way to worship? That just seems so sweet. Do you know what a dainty is? It's so precious, so holy, so simple, and it just seems so good. Little old hors d'oeuvres of life. Okay? Be careful, friend, when you take them from the wrong hands. All right? That's to say fellowship with their shortcomings and stumblings. Five, let the righteous smite me, and it shall be a kindness. A good person loves to be corrected. And let him reprove me. Let him, let him tell me it's wrong. It'll be a kindness. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head. It won't kill me. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. In other words, it will be an, the correction of the righteous. And there's really, don't, don't, don't look around the room. There's only one really righteous, and that's Christ. Let the Word correct you. Or let a person that is representing God, if they're truly righteous, I wish I could say I was righteous. I, about the time I think I've almost got it made, and I find something else wrong, and here we go. But... Fallen short. But when Christ corrects you, say, Thank you, Father. You love me enough to give me a stripe. And boy, will I learn from it. Alright? And then, when that is an anointing to you to pray that the wicked understand and see. Six. When their judges 
are overthrown in stony places. That's why we came here. Rocky ground, stony places. They shall hear my words, for they are sweet. Do you know why those words are sweet? Because it's this word. And do you know why His Word needs to be poured out on the stony ground? Remember the word dainties before? That is our dainties. Our dainties are the Word of God. We relish it. It is sweet. It is good. And it keeps us straight. It helps us. It strengthens us. It gives us purpose. And if you're ever depressed... Reading this is where God may give you a stripe, even as you read it, this prayer, and then continue to pray for yourself. But it will feel good, because it will mature you. It will bring you up. It will be sweet. In other words, this sweet is the dainties of God. That's what the one is saying. I don't want their dainties. I want yours. Our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth, as when one cutteth and cleaveth wood. Upon the earth. In other words, we are scattered. I don't know how many of you have taken an axe. We've got chainsaws now, so you don't see it too often. I've sure had to do it before they had chainsaws. Is to cut a tree down. And when the bit of the axe hits it, chips fly everywhere. I mean, just scattered. In other words, here we are. Nobody even knows who they are. That's what it's saying. All right? Just chips everywhere. Nobody knows who they are. Israel, Jacob doesn't know Jacob, and, and, um, and uh, so it is. Verse 8, But mine eyes are unto thee, O God the Lord, in thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. He never will, beloved. That's why when you're depressed, if something bad is about to happen, read this. Take it to you. Love it. Receive it. And trust Him. He knows exactly what He's doing. He hears you. He loves you. And He will guard you. He will not let you stumble even on stony places or stony ground. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me. And the gins, that's to say the traps of the workers of iniquity. Hey, they'll set new traps for you every day. Have you ever seen one of them? Have you ever got yourself all gummed up in one of them and wondered, what in the world am I doing here? How in the world did this happen to me? How did I let myself get wrapped up in this? Think about it. They're going to set those traps. He's telling you that. Get those whiskers out there. I use that analogy of the cat because spiritually that's what you should do. God gives you a spirit that those whiskers are out there and if something isn't right, you're not going to have to wonder. It's going to let you know the spirit is. And then to conclude, verse 10, let the wicked fall into their own nets whilst that I with all escape. This word escape in the Hebrew is pass over, while I pass over. Beloved, listen, Christ is our Passover. Don't ever forget that. It's even stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Christ is our Passover, or He is the one that causes the bad angel to pass over you the evil deeds to pass over you, the troubles to pass over you, those that you cannot handle. So, proskopto, you're moving forward at good speed. All of a sudden, you're chopped down. Be careful on rocky places. We all stump our toes every once in a while. And it's a good reminder... Be careful next time you come this way. In your life, learn the lessons of life. When you get bloodied a little bit, how come it to happen? You were on the wrong road, probably. 
Think about it. Next time, get over on the other road. Does that mean you're all going to turn out to be a perfect little bunch of angels? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. But it'll help you, beloved. It will make life bearable, and you won't get caught in this devious age, where, like I said, I could sit down and shed tears for this past week, with no problem. For the sadness that Satan has brought upon this world. Let the love grow strong in your family and never fail to share that love. Never forget to tell your mates you love them, your children you love them. And yeah, let them know things happen sometimes. Don't always turn out just like we plan it, but hey, we're tough. We're can-do type people. We'll work it out with God's help. Be a realist in Christ. And a realist knows if you, if, if you put on a brand new pair of shoes and walk in the rocks, what's going to happen to those shoes? Hmm? I don't purposely wear my boots out in the field if I can help it for that reason. They get all skinned up. And when you're walking through this earth, you're going to get skinned up. Don't be a realist and know that. But keep alert. And don't ever let it get you down. Do you know what happens when you just get down? Oh, gosh, I don't know if I can make another day or not. Satan's up there at the throne just like he was with Job. (laughs) Oh, God, we got that one. That old boy you thought was so red hot. Look at him. I've got him wrapped right around my little finger, God, and and he's, he's listening to me. Don't listen to Satan. Kick him out of your life, away from your family, protect your family, and be a can-do Christian for God. That brings joy to our Father's heart on behalf of His Son. There is nothing, I want to try to say this, and I hope it's not misunderstood, there is nothing that flatters a teacher more than to see one of his students in action Kicking the daylights out of Satan. I mean, putting it to practice in their life. It just makes a teacher feel good. Well, don't forget who is our head teacher. It's Christ. And even though God can can tell Satan, you can't have that one, our teacher, Christ, sitting at the right hand, has to take pride in you when you do something right. Right? And the way you do it right, you stay in His plan. I'm trying to shut this off, and it just seems like that it goes on and on. And I think it's because of the urgency of this hour, the troubles in this world. I, I want you to be protected from them. Though you're in the world, and there is no way other than having God as your sanctuary, and you're going to get skinned. A little bit occasionally. And I'm talking about your like shoes on rocky places. But you can handle it when you're in Him. Father, we thank You for the privilege of serving You. Thank You for being with us this day. Be with each of these. Let them be a blessing to all they come in contact with, Father. We thank You for this. In the name of Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Amen.